Glory, glory to God. How y'all doing on today? The Lord is good. He is faithful. He is blessed. This is a blessed day on today. And I definitely got a surprise for y'all again today. It took a couple of weeks, I think two weeks break, three weeks break, but the Lord gave me deliverance part three. So Friday night is getting some good, some good, some more good wisdom. Deliverance part three tonight. Those of you that follow Deliverance part one, you can find it. Deliverance part two, you can find that. And now you got this. Deliverance part three. Deliverance part three is going to be awesome. It's put together by the Lord. And I thank the Lord for using me and helping me and guiding me through this teaching. And the Lord showing me as well on what to do and how to do it. And also through me, the Lord is showing his peoples as well how to stay rooted and grounded in the process. Right? Glory to God, hallelujah, this process of deliverance and what you do, how to maintain it, what you must do, how to overcome it, and how to stay blessed. Glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, God. This is Friday, every Friday night, usually um, every Friday, 8 p.m. Unless something come up, might come out a little early, but most of the time it's 8 p.m. Friday. Thank God for all those that fellowship and support. We thank God for you. Glory to God, hallelujah. We live today and we got a, a Zoom line too where all the saints come on together and we encourage each other. We strengthen each other. We hear word, this teaching, this Bible study, this testimonies, this songs, this prayers. Um, our Zoom line is off the hook. And I thank God for our Zoom lines um, that we're doing to stay rooted and grounded in Christ and coming together as body of believers so that we could um, maintain our walk with God without having too much carnal things in our mind because carnal things is death. And anything that's not like God that goes in your mind and is death is no good for your soul. Glory to God, hallelujah. But the more you feed your mind with the light, the knowledge and the power of Christ, the more your heart and soul will become more like Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you'll be able to handle things more easier because as great as he that lives in you than he that lives in the world. Christ lives in you. That's the mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's one of the biggest mysteries is Christ living in you. The Holy Spirit is Christ living in you. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. But we're going to bless the Lord tonight, and we're going to bless his people. And we got an awesome part three. Like I said, you can, you, can, you can catch part one. You can catch part two. This is part three tonight called the Deliverance Part Three, which is needed in the body of Christ. They're not teaching you this in the buildings. The buildings, they're teaching you how to hoop and holler. They teach you how to dance around like a fool. They teach you how to speak in tongues and pay your tithes and your offerings and run around in this place and run around in this place and be broke for the rest of your life. But I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you what the Holy Spirit gives me. We're gonna we're gonna speak on the truth, and this is how you get delivered. Folks need deliverance, not religion. We need deliverance. You need a relationship with God. Not religion. Man-made religion has caused Satan to come inside of these buildings and cause more damage and trauma than, this, than the world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just imagine being broken and need deliverance from the church. And you go into the church building, you catch more demons. Jeez. That's exactly what's going on these days. Folks are coming from the streets, going into the buildings, and catching a devil. Getting a devil attached to them. 
And now they worse off than what they was before they even went into the building. That's why you got to be careful who house you go into. Not every house is a house of God, but some of these houses are dens of thieves. And if your eyes is open and you study and read the word of God, God will show you which houses belong to him and which houses don't. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But glory to God. Let's get back on subject. Let's get back on subject. The deliverance part three. On tonight, get your pens, your, your pads, um, whatever you use to write down God's word. Put it up, store it somewhere. If you're good with um, storing stuff in your heart without writing it down, to God be the glory if that's you. I can't do that, but everybody's different. I need to write some things down. I come from the heart. Most of the time is the heart. But then uh, it's from the heart too when I write it down, but... I'm going to give it to you raw. I'm going to give it to you raw the way the Lord gave it to me. And it's going to be awesome tonight. Glory to God. But remember to write it down if you can. So you can always go back and study it. All right? Yeah, go back and study it. It's important to go back and study your notes. That's what the notes is for. So you can go back and study it. This is called the Deliverance Part 3, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to begin. God bless all those that are on right now. Love you all. May the Lord bless you and touch you. And I pray that the Lord open your eyes during this sermon. Or during this teaching, more the teaching, forget the sermon, just the teaching. Right? Deliverance is a process that requires ongoing spiritual maturity, vigilance, and growth. Part three, which is what we are now, we explore deeper aspects of deliverance, focusing on what happens after deliverance, right? How to maintain freedom. And the spiritual disciplines that fortify a believer's life. Here are new highlights. It's going to be a bunch of new highlights. And keynotes to expand the subjects of deliverance. Along with spiritual backing. I got to back it up with scripture. We got to back everything up, you know, with the word of God. And, and God will be our glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Key highlights. Let's get your pins and pads ready. Key highlights of deliverance. Number one, those that are following. This is a good one. Number one starts off with a bang. Guarding, guarding against re-entry of evil spirits after deliverance. Let's say that again. Guarding against re-entry of evil spirits after deliverance. Yeah, this is going to teach us how to guard ourselves. Hey, because you need you need some type of guarding. After you get delivered, you got to guard yourself. The enemy may attempt to re-enter a person's life. It is essential to fill the void left by the expelled demonic presence with the word of God. And what else? Prayer. And what else? And the Holy Spirit. These three things you need. The word of God. You need prayer. And the Holy Spirit. The believer must close all spiritual doors that could give the enemy access again. You got to close those doors. And you, we don't got to call out them sins. You know some of them sins that cause Satan to come back into your life. Glory to God. We're not going to sit up here and call them out tonight. We're not, but God didn't make us dumb. We know what's evil and we know right from wrong. So whatever sin it is that you keep going back to, you're opening up these spiritual doors to allow the enemy access to you again. You need to read the word of God. You need to pray. Pray and you also need the Holy Spirit. You need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. King James Version. Let's do some. Let's do some history. Let's, 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 let's back to some. There's some keynote. There's, oh, excuse me. This highlight. These highlights of deliverance with a scripture to go with number one, which is guarded against reentry of evil spirits after after deliverance. Right? King James version. Of course, King James version. Of course. When the unclean spirit is going out of a man, 
He walketh through dry places seeking rest and find none. And to them spirits, let me break this down right here. Them spirits, right, when they go out of a man or a woman, man mean mankind, man or a woman, they can't rest. The only time a demonic spirit or an unclean spirit or a devil could rest is when they in you. They love tormenting you. Right? He walk up around, what, through dry places seeking rest and he finds none rest. Then he saith, look what the spirits say, this is what the devil say, or demon, whatever you want to call it. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. The house he's talking about is your body. Living inside of you. He calls living inside of you his house. Right? Right? His house from whence I come out. And when he is come, he find it empty, swept, and garnished. That's coming from the book of Matthew 12, 43, and 14. That's coming from the book of Matthew 12, 43 through the 44th verse. And he said, I'll return to my house. From whence I came out. He came out of the house. Satan so gonna always come back. He's gonna try to come back and go right back in. And when he found it, and when he when he come, he found it in what? It was empty. See? See? This is the problem. This is the problem with a lot of us why we can't get delivered. Because every time Satan come back, the house is empty. What you saying, Pastor Bias? Well, your house is empty because you're not praying. You're not reading the word of God. You're not worshiping. You're not fasting. You're not you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. You need to get filled with the Spirit or need a renewing of the Spirit. You need to be renewed again. Glory to God. And when he is come, he find it empty, it's swept, and it's garnished. That means it's ready to go for that devil to come back into your life and cause havoc. Matthew 12, 43. Through the 44th verse, King James Version. Ladies and gentlemen, number two, living a lifestyle of worship. Yes, glory to God. It's got a lot to do with your deliverance. Living a lifestyle of worship. Worship is a key weapon in maintaining deliverance. A life centered on the worship of God drives out the presence of darkness and strengthens the believer connection to the Holy Spirit. That's what worship is. Glory to God is important to worship God. Worship Him more. Get on your knees and worship Him. Worship Him for however long you can. Set some time apart each and every day to glorify your God and worship him in the beauty of holiness. KJ Virgin Scripture to help us with this, this number two. But thou art holy God, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Psalms 22 and 3. He's so worthy. He's so holy. Ain't that something that you... He, he inhabit the praises of us. Give God your praises. Give him your worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He deserves it. Because he's a holy God. And a holy God deserves a holy praise. Number three, ladies and gentlemen. Walking in spiritual authority after deliverance. Yep, that's number three. Walking in spiritual authority after deliverance. Right? Let me give you number three again. Walking in spiritual authority after deliverance. Believers need to walk. An authority given to them by Jesus. Understanding the authority in Christ allows individuals to resist the devil effectively and stand against future attacks. You'll be able to resist 
as long as you're following after the authority of Christ. If you're following after your own advice, you're going to fail. But walking in spiritual authority after deliverance, and that's only through Christ, not by you. Not by somebody else, but it got to be by Christ. The authority in Christ allows individual, the authority of Christ allows individual, individuals to resist the devil. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. And stand against future attacks, any attack that comes up against you. Jesus is your authority figure. He's the power. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The power lives in you. You have the authority, Right? To defeat Satan. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get some scripture to help us with number three, walking in spiritual authority after deliverance. This is after deliverance. After you've been delivered, you got to continue to walk in spiritual authority. Right? Scripture to back it up. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Yeah, when you believe, these are signs that's going to follow. In my name, he said, in my name, which is Jesus, shall they cast out devils, right? This is what's going to happen. In my name, you're going to cast out devils. And they shall speak with new tongues. That's Mark 16 and 17. Glory to God. Now, if you follow this, you see, there's signs that follow for those that's walking in spiritual authority. God give you power. They cast out these devils. They stay away from you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because what? Follow them that believe. Because you are a believer. Glory to God. In my name shall they cast out devils. You'll be able to cast out devils in Jesus' name. Because what? You believe. You can't cast out nothing or you will not be delivered. Nor will you be healed. Nor will sickness leave. Nor, what? Why? Because you don't believe you got a lot of mouth play but your heart is far away from God and the truth your heart is far away from the Lord and the truth your heart says no your mouth say yes but your heart says no to believing in Jesus you need to walk in spiritual authority after deliverance in order to continue to stay free glory to God hallelujah ladies and gentlemen going into number four Number four, make sure you got your pins and your pads. The importance of accountability and community. See? And community. Now check this out. This thank God he gave me this. The importance of accountability, right? And community. What does that mean, Pastor? Well, check this out. Maintaining deliverance is much easier. When a person is surrounded by other believers who encourage them and help them stay accountable. Yes. Being part of a Christ-centered community provides strength and spiritual covering. That's why we have a Zoom live. That's why folks have church buildings. So that believers could come together and encourage and strengthen each other. You need it. You need the fellowship one way or another. You can't do it on your own. It's impossible. Glory to it's impossible to do it by yourself. Loneliness will kick in and Satan will have his way with your flesh. Glory to God. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good manners so eventually if you're not surrounding yourself with good fruits you're going to be communicating with negative fruits and it's going to corrupt your good manners that's why it's good to stay around good fruit folks so that you can stay centered christ centered and stable and accountable Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Being part of a Christ-centered community provides strength and spiritual cover. Let's go to King James Version Scripture. Bear ye, quote, bear ye one another burdens. See? we. Well, this is what the believers are supposed to do. Bear ye one another burdens. 
I'm not supposed to be, expose you. I'm not supposed to beat you down. I'm not supposed to judge you. Yeah, God does it through his word. But we are supposed to bear one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians 6 and 2. That's coming from Galatians 6 and 2. Again, our job is to, is to bear ye one another burdens. That's our job. It didn't say beat the person down because they fell. It, 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 didn't say, it didn't say expose them. You just made their deliverance process worse. In order for your brother to get delivered, they need to see love. They need to feel Christ. They don't want to feel condemned or judged. Plus, you don't have the authority to judge because you're not perfect yourself. The devil is a liar. You're not perfect. You got planks all in your eye. You try to judge your brother because it's a different sin or a different form from what you felt or how you sin. The devil is a liar. Bear ye one another burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. It's coming from Galatians 6 and 2. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Looking for a head rag, but I don't know what I do with my head rag. I'm sweating like, like a like a swine over here. Glory to God, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bear you one another scriptures like this and make you, in the Word of God, is power. Bear you one another burden so you fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians six and two. Glory to God. We about to go into number five, ladies and gentlemen. We about to go into number five. Glory to God. Ah, that feels better. Thank you, Lord. We're about to go into number five. Uh, make sure you got your pens and your pads ready. We're about to go into number five. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Ah. Uh, Number five, ladies and gentlemen. Stay in vigilant after spiritual warfare. Let me say that again, number five. Stay in vigilant against spiritual warfare. Right? Deliverance is not the end of spiritual warfare, ladies and gentlemen. Believers must remain alert and watchful. That's why the Bible says, watch and pray. As the enemy constantly seeks opportunities to deceive and bring people back into what? Bondage. Vigilance is necessary to avoid falling into old habits or temptations. Old habits or temptations. Glory to God, it happens to us. Let's get some King James Version Scriptures. Or King James Version Scripture. To hold us down with this. Quote, Be sober. Be diligent. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about. Seeking whom he may devour. First Peter 5 and 8. That's why it's important to be sober. A sober mind. A mind that's not um, influenced or holding on to garbage of the world. Carnal things. A sober mind that doesn't hold on to carnal things. But have more righteousness and light and holy things in your mind. That's a sober mind. Be vigilant, which we're talking about now, right? Because your adversary is what? He's the devil. That's who your enemy is. He's the devil. And the devil used people. Write this down. Satan uses people, places, and things. Let me say this again. Satan uses people, places, and things. To keep 
you trapped. Glory to God. You'll get that one day. You'll get that one day. You'll get it one day if you didn't catch it right now. People, places, and things. That was number five. Staying vigilant against spiritual warfare. Always stay on your guard. That's what vigilant means. Stay on your guard. Even though you've been delivered, stay on your guard. Stay watchful. That's what that means. Because Satan is like a he's like a roaring lion. He's walking around seeking whom he could devour. And if he feel like he could devour you because you're not in your right mind, he will do it and put you back into spiritual bondage. Number six, ladies and gentlemen. Filling your mind with godly thoughts. That's a good one. <laughs> I told you, have good, your mind on good things. Number six, filling your mind with godly thoughts. Mm -hmm. Why? Why, Pastor? Why? Well, the battlefield for deliverance is often in the mind. After being set free, renewing the mind by meditating on God's word ensures that thoughts are aligned with God. God's truth and not with the lies of the enemy. See? That's why it's important to line your thoughts up with God's truth, not the lies of the enemy. Scripture to help us with number six. King James Version, of course. Quote, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, write this down, what well, some of the things are honest? What well, some of the things are just? What well, some of the things are pure? What well, some of the things are lovely? What well, some of the things are of good report? If there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, the Bible says, think on these things. Woo! Jesus Christ. Good God, this, that, that one scripture, that's deliverance. I feel deliverance right there. Jesus. Philippians 4. In eight, my God, Jesus Christ, and that was number six. That was that was the closing of the six highlights. These are key highlights. I'm just gonna run over the six key highlights again for those that want to hear them again. Number one, guarding against reentry of evil spirits. Number two, living a lifestyle of worship. Number three. Walking in spiritual authority after deliverance. Number four, the importance of accountability in community and community maintaining deliverance. Number four, the importance in the importance of accountability and community maintaining. Right? Number five, staying vigilant against spiritual warfare. Number six, filling your mind with godly thoughts. Right? Next phase down, the next phase down, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we'll continue on this teaching, right, quickly, will be new, new keynotes. These are new keynotes from, from if those that watch Deliverance Part 1, Deliverance Part 2. Now, these are new keynotes on maintaining deliverance, Right? New keynotes. There's some, there's some keynotes now. Not highlights, but keynotes, which are similar. Highlights and keynotes are similar. Keynote number one daily repentance and cleaning and cleansing. Daily repentance and cleansing. That's number one. Daily repentance and cleansing. Deliverance is not just a one time event. It requires ongoing repentance and self-examination. Daily repentance helps to keep the heart pure and ensures that no unconfessed sin gives the enemy a foothold. 
King James Version Scripture, ladies and gentlemen, to back it up. <laughs> Quote, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Psalms 51 and 10. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Created me a clean heart, O God, renew a right spirit within me. Glory to God. Psalms 51 and 10. Number one, that was... um. Daily repentance and clean and cleansing, which is new keynotes now. New keynotes, ladies and gentlemen. Number two, operating in spiritual discernment. Yes. Operating in spiritual discernment. Discernment is crucial in maintaining deliverance. Believers must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's warnings. About harmful influences, relationships, or situations that could lead to spiritual oppression again. See, a lot of us, this, this hurted a lot of us because we didn't have spiritual discernment and we fell into a relationship with someone, right? Again, people, places, and things that brought us back into oppression, brought us back to that place of doubt, lack, and darkness. But God is here to set you free tonight. Glory to God, hallelujah. He's here to set you free with his word, right? And it happens to us all where believers must be sensitive to the Holy Spirit's warning. This is God speaking now, giving us all warnings on how to avoid these situations or how to get back to him, right? Glory to God, hallelujah. Relationships are situated that can lead to spiritual oppression again. You'll be oppressed all over again because you didn't have discernment. Satan came and tricked you. And since you didn't hear the voice of God, right, for whatever reason, there's a whole bunch of reasons, right? There's a whole bunch of reasons that was already read, really, or as to why you probably didn't have spiritual discernment in the first place. That's why it happened. One, sometimes it's because you got to go through this experience in order to grow, right? Two, it could be because you might not be praying like you should. You might not be studying the word of God like you should. You might not be fasting or, or, or submitting yourself to God like you should. So what happens is you don't have discernment. Because the less you give God, the more carnal things come into your mind. And when the more carnal things come into your mind, you cannot hear God correctly. You can't receive God correctly because your mind got all the other baggage in it. That's what God tells us to think on these things. He gives us things to think on. Godly things and pure things so that our soul can stay connected to Him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we'll be able to have spiritual discernment. Oh, spiritual discernment got me hype. You got me ready to preach up in here. Number three. Oh, wait, 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 excuse me, excuse me. I didn't give us a scripture. Glory to God. Scripture for number two. King James Version. Quote, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hebrews 5 and 14. Glory to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Woo, take on this meat, ladies and gentlemen. Get off that breast milk. Woo, time for this meat now. And glory to God, you take on this meat, you're going to have full discernment. Glory to God. God, you're going to have discernment if you're eating this meat correctly. Glory to God, hallelujah. These, these, this, 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 this teaching will have you equipped. Glory to God and build a better relationship with you and the Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Number three, ladies and gentlemen. Building a strong prayer life. Yes. Number three is building a strong prayer life. A consistent and fervent prayer life keeps believers spiritually fortified and connected to God. Through prayer, we seek God's guidance, strength, and protection from future attacks. It's important to pray, ladies and gentlemen. What's a, what's a, a Christian without praying? Not, a Christian that don't pray is not a Christian. You're something else. You're not a Christian. True Christians. 
Not the not the not the religion, because true Christians are gonna pray. They got a prayer life. You gotta pray more. They stay connected to God. Through prayer, we seek God's guidance, strength, and protection for future attacks. You got to build a strong prayer life, ladies and gentlemen, in order to be delivered. And stay delivered. Stay delivered. King James Version Scripture. Quote, pray without ceasing. First Thessalonians. Five and seventeen. Ain't that so? That's the script. That's just that's all it says. Ain't that so? Quote, pray without ceasing, which means don't stop. Don't let a day go by that you don't pray. Continue to pray. When it's bad, pray. When it's good, pray. When it's in between, in between, pray. Praying is your connection to God. It's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Quote. There goes another one. Watch and pray. Ain't that so? That you enter not into temptation. This is why you should watch and pray. So you don't enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. Matthews 26. In 41, the, the flesh is weak. The weak, your weak flesh don't want you to pray. It wants to see, it wants to stay weak so that it can lead you into darkness and error. Oh, you don't need to pray. Tonight you good. No, the devil's a lie. I'm going to pray and I'm going to get my flesh. I'm going to put my flesh under. I'm going to present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, which is my reasonable service. And I'm going to get up and pray. I don't care if I got to do the Lord's prayer or prayers cut out my mouth. I'm going to glorify God with a prayer. And let's come from Matthew 26 and 41. And the first one was uh first Thessalonians uh, first Thessalonians 5 and 17. That was pray without ceasing. That's two scriptures to um, help us with number three, building a strong prayer life. Number four, ladies and gentlemen, of these key points. Number four, identifying and closing open doors. Yeah. Identifying and closing open doors. Some doors you need to, some doors you need to close. Why is your ex still connected to you? All he do is bring you down. All he do is curse you out. All he do is beat you to the ground. All he do is keep you drugged up. God said close that door. Glory to God. Close the door. That door open there is is, is 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 the devil, and you need deliverance. Yes, glory to God. An open door in the spiritual realm refers to anything that gives the enemy legal ground to influence or oppress a person. See, identifying and closing open doors such as unresolved anger. Unforgiveness or sinful habits ensures that the enemy has no place in a believer's life. These are just some open doors that you got to close. Close that anger. Close the door to unforgiveness. Close them doors to sinful habits. Close them and open up the door and let Christ in. Christ is knocking at the door. Let him in so that he can clean up your heart. King James Version Scripture. Ladies and gentlemen, I love it. Quote, neither give place to the devil. That's it. That's it. That's the scripture. Neither give place to the devil. Don't give the devil no place in your mind, in your house, in your body, in your soul, in your relationship, in your marriage, in your friendship. Don't give him no place. No place. Don't let, don't give him a crack. 
Don't let there be no leak in no building. It's a leak. Satan coming in. If the window's cracked, he's coming in. If the door left open, Satan coming in. Neither give place to the devil. That's coming from Ephesians 4 and 27. Ephesians 4 and 27. Ephesians 4 and 27. Number five. We almost done, so we go to number seven. And then we be not we be done. This is number five, ladies and gentlemen. The teaching had to come out. Deliverance part three. People love part one. They love part two. And this is deliverance part three, y'all. This is deliverance part three. More keynotes, more highlights was added, more scriptures. Number five, ladies and gentlemen. Confessing the word of God over your life. Yes. That's a good one. Confessing the word of God over your life. This is a good key point. Speaking the word of God aloud over your life is a powerful method of maintaining deliverance. Confessing scripture about freedom, protection, and the promises of God reminds the believer of their spiritual inheritance and strengthens faith. And it strengthens faith. King James Version. Quote, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Ain't that something? And they that love it shall eat the fruit there. Proverbs 18 and 21. Speak life, ladies and gentlemen. God help me with this one. Oh, Lord, this is one I know. Lord, this is, I know when the Lord gave me these right here. Confessing the word of God over your life. Not just over yours, but over somebody else's too. Don't speak bad over somebody else's life. Glory to God. Speak life over their life. Even if it looks like it's bad, speak life. Speak life over your children. Speak life over your marriage. Speak life over yourself. Speak life over your grandchildren. Speak life into the streets over the gangbangers and prostitutes and pimps and hoes. Speak life. Glory to God. Saying God could save them because he saved you. Oh God, God could deliver them because God delivered you. Glory to God. Number six, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I knew this one was the Lord. Thank you. Fasting for greater breakthrough. Ain't that something for a greater breakthrough? Fasting for greater breakthrough. Fasting coupled with prayer can bring deeper breakthroughs in areas where spiritual strongholds are stubborn. Fasting humbles the flesh and open the believer to a greater spiritual sensitivity and Power. That's what fasting is, ladies and gentlemen. It brings you closer to God and it breaks spiritual strongholds that are stubborn and don't want to let go. Put like the devils that don't want to let go of your soul. The only way these devils going to come out is by what? Fasting and praying. So the way this devil going to come out. The devil not going to come out by you just praying. Praying is not enough for this type of demon. This demon only going to come out by fasting and praying. That's why some of us haven't been delivered yet because we haven't fast. Fasting and praying, you'll get delivered from that spirit. That spiritual stronghold that you cannot let go. Glory to God. KJ's version of scripture. Quote, is it not that the fast that I have chosen... To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free, and that ye may break every yoke. Isaiah 58 and 6. The fast, look what it does. So, hold you fasting is important, ladies and gentlemen. Isaiah. Isaiah 58 and 6. Fasting is important, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be too lazy that you can't fast. If you don't fast, you won't be delivered. Your state bounded by Satan. If you truly love God and you hear God speaking through this word, you will start fasting more. So that you can break these spiritual connections that Satan, these spiritual dark chains that Satan has applied to your soul. And he not letting go by just prayer alone. You got to put some work in by fasting. Proving that you love God. 
and that you're willing to do anything to be set free from these devils. To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free. Glory to God. Start fasting. Number seven. We're almost done. Testify of God's deliverance. See, testimony. And that's what we do. Man, this, is, this is amazing. I love this part right here. Testifying of God's deliverance. Share what the Lord has done for you. See? It's so important, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we have a Zoom line. Anybody welcome to come? We love it. We have a nice, wonderful crowd. Uh, pretty much every day, you know, 8 p.m. almost. Except on Tuesdays and Fridays. Fridays, I'm, I'm live. But every day besides that, 8 p.m., we on Zoom and we're giving God glory and praising God and folks are giving testimonies and, you know, it, it, and it's amazing. Um, testimony, testifying of God's deliverance. Sharing testimonies of God's delivering power not only encourages others, but also reinforces the believer's faith in what God has done. Testimonies reminds us of the victory we have in Christ and helps solidify the work of God, solidify the work God has done. Ain't that something? Yep, God has done it. God did it. You didn't do it. God did it. Glory to God. It was God that gets all the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why we testify. King James Version Scripture, ladies and gentlemen. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb. Quote, and they overcome, came him by the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Glory to God. That's Revelation 12 and 11. Is that son? We have read the, ain't, ain't that son? We overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Ain't that son? This is how you overcome him. Overcome any devil, any spirit, anything that's not like God. Give a testimony. Share your deliverance. And share how you've been delivered. Right? Glory to God. Right? Share what the Lord has done for you and how the Lord could help you. Well, with these keynotes and highlights of Deliverance Part 1, Deliverance Part 2, and Deliverance Part 3, God is speaking and showing us and giving us instruction on how you can be delivered. You must believe. 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 Right? You must be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And allow the Holy Ghost to be your guidance so that you could be delivered. It's not a game. You got to really want God. You can't just say, I want to be free, but you don't want Christ. Yeah. I want to be free, but I don't want to serve God. I just want the healings. I want the deliverance, but I don't want to be, I don't really believe that. But you're not going to be set free. You're going to always be bound in darkness. And I'm not speaking darkness of your life. That's just the way that it is. In order for you to be set free, you got to want it. You must believe. It's personal. A personal relationship with Christ. And God has given us the warnings. He's given us the keynotes. And the highlights on how to follow by. And how to do it. So we don't have an excuse. We, can't, we don't have no excuses. God is showing us. Now we follow this. From, from Deliverance Part 1. Deliverance Part 2. And now this is Part 3. Deliverance Part 3 tonight. You will be delivered. If you do what God told you to do, that's what a believer do. That's faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. That's faith. Believe in what God said and you do it just the way that he told you to do it. Rather it's come from me or another man of God, another woman of God. God gave us the instructions. And God instructs us to be filled with his spirit if you're not already. And if you are, this is how you clean it. Because you need a cleansing. This is how you stay delivered. This is what you need to do more of. Praying, fasting, studying, meditating, worshiping God. God has given us the instructions and the tools to stay free. Glory to God. If God didn't want to speak to you, he wouldn't have you on his line tonight. 
If God didn't want to speak to you, Nelson. God obviously want to speak to you because you didn't bring yourself here. If you was to open up your mind a little bit, even right now, God is speaking to you now like he's speaking to the rest of us. Not just you, he's speaking to all of us. This is God speaking. The Bible says, great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. All you got to do is hear it and believe it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then you could be set free from the devil. Glory to God. And you overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. Revelation 12 and 11. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the conclusion, the ongoing journey of deliverance. Glory to God. I love y'all. all Y'all got me hype. Deliverance is not a singular event, but a continuous walk and freedom with Christ. It's continuous. It requires, listen, daily commitment to spiritual disciplines, reliance on the Holy Spirit. See, Holy Spirit, you need to get filled in faith in the power of Jesus. To maintain deliverance, believers must guard their hearts and minds, remain vigilant in spiritual warfare, and immerse, immerse themselves in the truth of God's word through praying, fasting, in confession of the word. We can fortify our lives and resist the tactics of the enemy. Ultimately, deliverance is a lifelong journey of sanctification. This is holiness teaching. Growing in intimacy with God and living in the abundant freedom Christ has purchased for us. Glory to God. I love you all. Lord, Heavenly Father, we're so thankful on tonight, oh God, Jesus. Oh Lord, we thank you, Father. Let your word touch our hearts, oh God. And let every word that came from you, Father, plant into our heart and into our minds and into our souls. Guide us, oh Jesus. Keep us on the straight path. Give us the strength, the courage, and the diligence to seek you every day, O oh God, so that we can be set free from the things that's not like God, that's attached, that's attached to our minds and our hearts and our bodies and our souls, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father, for giving us the tools and the instruments, O oh God, to defeat the enemy. O oh Lord, and we know that if we listen to thy words and listen to thy power, and listen to your guidance, oh God, we'll be straight. We'll overcome him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Anything that's dark, anything that's not like God, any type of spiritual wickedness, wickedness will be defeated because thy word is truth. We thank you, Lord, for thy word. Thy word lifts us up and gives us powers and encourages us. And keep us going in the name of Jesus. Lord, look after your people everywhere. Cover them, God, with your love like water cover the sea everywhere, God. Touch us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. Oh, God, and camp your angels around us. Push back death, harm, danger, and destruction. Thank you, Lord, for deliverance even right now. In the name of Jesus. God, with these tools that you have given us, God, we'll use them, oh, God, to set ourselves free. So that we can walk in freedom. And walk after you, oh, Lord. So that we can pick up our cross, oh God, and follow after you, oh Jesus. God, we thank you for the sacrifice. And we thank you, Lord, that you allow us to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, God, which is our reasonable service. God, free us right now from any sin. In the name of Jesus, forgive us now. God, we repent of God anything that's dark. Clear our souls. God, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for having compassion on us. Even when we don't deserve it, God, you are merciful. God, we thank you for covering us, keeping our sins hidden in the name of Jesus and remembering them no more in the name of Jesus and giving us a clean heart and renewing in us a new spirit in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you even right now, even as we rest tonight where we are, 
God, I ask that you protect us in our rest. Push back the hands of the enemy. Keep us covers and lovers. In your precious day, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is faithful. He's wonderful. And we believe him. We're going to trust him. We're going to keep fighting. Glory to God. I see y'all again tomorrow night, 8 p.m. on Zoom. The information will go up about the Zoom. Another word from the Lord tomorrow, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. on Zoom. I can't wait to share it. Glory to God what the Lord has given me to give to his peoples. Those of y'all that want to be a part of the Zoom, come on and join in. The information will be up. Come in and join in and join the Lord. Come hear the word. It's a special word. The Zoom word is a special word for those that 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 that's hungry, that's hunger, that's that's hungry and thirsting after righteousness. They have, they have pushed their way to come onto a Zoom conference, and we all will sit there at the table, amongst tables, chairs, bed, wherever you at, wherever you at. You don't gotta show yourself. You, you know, say as long as you on, you hearing what God is saying. And guess what? We we're, we're growing. We're all growing in the Lord. But I love you all. May the Lord bless y'all on tonight. Keep y'all on tonight, and let's continue to do the work of the Lord. God bless you. Y'all keep me in prayer as I keep y'all in prayer, and we pray for each other. Encourage each other and build each other up. In Jesus' name, God bless you.